Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about the HP ProLiant DL360P Gen 8 server memory upgrades and how to load the system. For starters, there's two types of chassis. There is the 8-bay small form factor and the 4-bay large form factor. The 4-bay large form factor is a little bit more desirable and more exp expensive on the resale market. Uh, this utilizes two CPU sockets with Intel E5-2600 V1 or V2 series CPUs, which is an LGA 2011 socket. There are 24 DIMM slots, which is an improvement from the past gen, which is the DL360 Gen 7, going from 18 slots all the way up to 24 slots. And now, instead of only using ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, you can also use load reduced memory, known as LRDIM. Uh, with ECC registered, you can max out at 512 gigabytes, which is utilizing 1632 gigs at 1600 megahertz. With LRDIMs, you can go all the way up to 768 gigabytes, which is utilizing all 24 slots at 1866 megahertz. And then you might ask why, why can you only put 16 uh, DIMs for uh, ECC registered? Well, it's actually quite simple. It's known as the rank rule. With the rank rule, it basically states that you can only use eight ranks across uh, a memory channel. And since these utilize three DIMMs uh, per memory channel, basically with registered, you can only get um, 16 DIMMs in. And we'll go into that a little bit further. Uh, the rank rule applies uh, to everything that is DDR3, that whether you're using an a HP board, a Dell board, a super micro board, or even a random, you know, a Zeus board or something like that, it's, it's always gonna be the same. You can, you're always gonna run into the rank rule for DDR3 ECC register. Um, so all right, let's go ahead and open the, uh, this machine up. We'll show you how to physically load the, the DIMMs. We'll go over the rank rule a little bit more. Uh, but before we do, I need to get my ESD gear on because you need to always wear ESD gear uh, to be safe when opening the machines. Now that we have our ESD gear on, uh, our ESD smock, gloves, and wrist strap, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from being shocked. Uh, first things first, make sure your uh, latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open and remove the top. Very simple. You will notice with the uh, 360 PGN8 compared to the 380 PGN8, uh, there is no air baffle as a whole. The machine is, uh, you know, it's a tight one you fit. Uh, so the air just flows perfectly through there. So there's really nothing that you need to remove. Um, and for the most part, it's pretty, just everything's pretty readily accessible from the CPUs to the, um, to the modules. So as we talked about, there are two CPU sockets. CPU one uh, controls the 12 DIMMs over here, and CPU two controls the 12 DIMMs over here. Um, this is important to note, because if you only have one CPU, like this machine has right now, you cannot actually put any of the modules on this side. They will not register. Pretty obvious, I know, but want to state that just to be safe, in case someone out there is running into that issue right now. Um, so right now it's actually loaded with uh, four four gigs. Uh, that's terrible from a performance standpoint. We're actually gonna load it up to 288 gigabytes for this specific customer. But as we discussed, you could go all the way up to uh, 768 if you wanted to load all the slots. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about the rank rule. So we had talked about the rank rule um, and I wanted to show you now that you can physically see all the slots. So CPU one has 12 DIMMs. Within that, there are four memory channels. Each memory channel has three DIMM slots. The importance of this is because that means that each memory channel can only take eight ranks. So if you put in quad rank ECC registered, like a 16 gig 8500 or any 32 gig, because all 32 gigs are quad rank, you could only put them in the first two DIMM slots of each memory channel. And each memory channel goes white, black, black, white, black, black, white, black, black. So you would simply just put it in the first and the second slot. In the third slot, you would leave it empty and then go to the next. This is also important if you were using uh, ECC unbuffered, which we rarely talk about because it's kind of a waste to use those as a whole, in my opinion, because they're so expensive. But if you were using those, it would be the same thing. You couldn't put three ECC unbuffered into um, uh, to one DIMM channel. So let's show you how to physically take them out, put them in. You'll see just like uh, anything else, it's really simple. Uh, you just uh, push the tabs and pull it out. Um, very simple. I do actually recommend, I put my hand uh, over to make sure it doesn't just pop up because every once in a while a module will go flying up uh, and you don't want that because it can land and uh, damage a potentially dim slot or the lead on the module and then the module is no good anymore. Uh, so not anything that you you want, so always better to be safe than sorry. So just use two hands and be safe. You notice it's a little snug over here but it's still pretty easy to get them out. So, Okay, now we're going to uh, load them up. I'm not going to do all of them because I know 
uh, that time is money and everyone uh, has stuff to do. So we'll just do maybe like six of them real quick. Actually, I do want to note before we, we start loading them, you will notice right here there is a notch, also known as a key in the middle. This is important because if you were trying to load uh, a DDR4 module or a DDR2 module, module it physically would not fit into the slots. The manufacturers have made them to basically prevent users from making this, uh, this error, which is more common than you would think. Um, and if you were trying to to use a desktop module also physically would not fit but important because if you flip this around around the wrong way and you try to load it you can damage the dim slot or you could damage the module so it's, it's I know it's a simple thing but I always stress on it because I've seen it happen too many times so just make sure you put it in the proper way um, since I'm loading these I always actually recommend to go ahead and click these out uh, to make it easier so you're not doing it while you're doing it and then start on the farthest side because if you, let's say you start on the, the first part of the channel and then work your way back it gets snugger over here simple things just to make your life easier alright so now we're gonna go ahead and just load that load this up you will notice over here click and that means you physically got it in sometimes like right there I pushed kinda hard um, and it didn't really go in um, and I'm always gonna be gentle because you never want to damage the board but sometimes if you're wondering if it's fully in and you're not sure make sure you hear the click and you'll see the tab actually goes all the way back if it's sticking out a little bit it's not in there and then there's a chance that you didn't see it properly and when when that happens then it doesn't register and then customers think that they have an actual error or a dim failure and it's just not seated properly more common than you think all right so we're just, like i said going to do quick six and one thing i would like to note um i i personally this is a personal belief for me i feel like when you're talking about uh, a machine like this the dl380 uh, Gen 8, I'm sorry, the DL360 P Gen 8. Um, it, it, you know, machines now that are out are like Gen 10s, right? And Gen 10s are crazy expensive, like 10,000 plus, like a starting cost. Um, you know, it's just so, so expensive that um, people don't always want to make the jump. And using a, a refurbished machine is smart, or even just upgrading your old machine is smart. Um, and to me, the best band aid that you can do to kind of uh, extend the life of your machine another few years before you do have to bite the bullet and maybe go to a Gen 9 or Gen 10 or when Gen 11 comes out. Uh, memory. CPUs are so much further ahead of everything else. Um, upgrading the CPU, yes, while it's great, uh, most of the time doesn't help performance as much as people will think. I actually think uh, uh, upgrading the RAM is where you're really going to get the biggest boost in performance. So anyhow, so we've loaded them up. You see how simple that was? You can knock it out really quick. Uh, it's very simple. If you wanted to load the whole machine up, you could do it in a matter of minutes, which is great uh, as far as just increasing performance for uh, cheap and uh, efficient time. So, okay, now that we've done it, we're going to put the top back on. And you see it's pretty easy, just like anything else, just load it up and uh, line it up and then click it and simple. So that's it. Uh, we've loaded it up. The machine, uh, we'll fill it up later with everything else for everyone else, but it, it's a simple, simple upgrade. So anyhow, appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions or you need any RAM for yourself, please message us at sales at cloudengines.com. That's sales at cloudengines.com. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.